thank you for joining with us this morning. I pray that uh, you'll be richly blessed as you uh, hear the word of God and as you join us for worship afterwards. Uh, after the uh, after the service, we also have a Sunday morning program for our children as well. So I hope you can gather your children around and just uh, just let your children enjoy the teaching and the memory verses and also the songs later. Uh, so before we begin, uh, I just uh, invite all of us to let's pray and let's just commit our hearts to the Lord before I share the word. Father, I thank you today. I pray for everyone who's turned up today, Lord, and joined us for this online church service. I thank you, God, that uh, you have given us hope. You've given us courage to face the future, regardless of what's happening in our nation. Father, we know that, uh, Lord, that this is only temporary. God, we know that uh, we will all come out of this, oh God, stronger than before. I know, God, that you have always a way out of all this crisis, Lord, and our trust is always in you. Thank you, Father, for the word. I pray that as I share the word of God today, that you'll open the hearts and lives of every person. Thank you, God. We commit this time into your hands. We pray, Lord, for all of our church members. Pray for all of those who are joining with us as well online, Lord, and even from abroad. We pray your protection, your blessing upon them. Father, we know, God, that your word will continue to spread, O oh God, regardless of whatever happens around us. We put our trust in you and we thank you. We pray for different churches today, also having online services, uh, Lord, and in gatherings in some way and somehow, uh, Lord, abroad and locally, Father, we commit all this into your hands. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, and amen, and amen. Uh, yeah, thank you again for joining with us uh, this morning. Uh, I just want to ask you, as I share the word of God, in the midst of this pandemic, do you feel like giving up? Do you feel like sometimes as if, you know, the pressure is so strong that you just want to say, man, this is too hard for me. And I've had enough, you know, and and I think many people feel that way because in this crisis, which has been happening now, I think for about 18 months or so, it's been on and off lockdowns, containment zones and everything else. There's a lot of pressure going on. There's a there's a lack of food. Uh, children are suffering and all these things are happening around us. And, you know, sometimes we can be so worried even about the future. And this is why I want to speak to you about David from the Bible. You know, David had a similar situation, and I believe David even had it worse. Uh, you know, uh, as, we, as we learn about David's life, we will realize the kind of life David had uh, and the kind of pressure that he faced. So even though David was anointed by God, yet he also had to undergo severe pressures of life. And so I want to talk to you from the Word of God. I want to, you know, explain to you from the Word of God about David's David's life. And um, and so I just I just want to just uh, you know just encourage you uh, today. You know, don't give up, even though you're going through a very tough time. And you know, we will see from the Scripture that David also went through a very tough time. He did not give up. And so I encourage all of us: don't give up, because God. You know, what he did for David, he can do for us. And so, you know, David, he, you know, from the time that he was anointed as a young man, you know, some Bible scholars believe 15 years old, when Prophet Samuel came and anointed David as the next king, and yet there was already another king on the throne of Israel. That was King Saul. So when David was anointed as king to the time that he actually sat on the throne of Israel was a very long time. There's many years. And during those years that David waited until he became king, he faced persecution, he faced attacks on his life, and all kinds of threats from King Saul. King Saul was jealous of David, didn't want David to take his throne or his kingdom, and so he persecuted him, he threatened him, he tried to kill him at any cost. And so David lived under that kind of uh, persecution from Saul, that kind of pressure. And so you can tell that uh, David did not have it easy. You know, David was not just sitting back, you know, waiting to become king. In fact, when he was anointed and when Saul was after him, David had to undergo pressure. He had to learn patience and endurance. And that's what I like to talk about today. I'd like to talk about this message titled, It's So Long. But in that title, I want to talk to us about patience and endurance. You know, these are two things that I believe describe David's journey, patience and endurance. 
And you know, patience and endurance are like twins in the Bible because many places in the Bible, you will see that they are working together to produce something that God wants for the believers' lives. And you know, in, 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 in Hebrews chapter 6, and in the King James, uh, Hebrews 6.15, in the New King James and the King James, it says, And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. This is talking about Abraham now and describing about endurance and patience. He says, after Abraham, he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So after waiting, he obtained the promise. But before he obtained the promise, these two things of, were, were very important. These two things were very important in Abraham's life. Patience and endurance. It was through patience and endurance that he was able to you know, endure for 25 years before Isaac was born. And he went on to do other great things for God. You know, endurance and patience is hardly spoken about in the, in the body of Christ. But these are two things that is mentioned when it comes to Abraham's life. And you will see that if you want to do great things for God, if you are believing for great promises from God, if you have a calling from God, these are two things that we really need to cultivate in our lives. We need to know how these things work in our lives. Patience and endurance. Endurance is more than just waiting and doing nothing. Endurance is more about, you know, going through difficult circumstances in the midst of pain or loss or sorrow or, or struggles, but you still carry on until you reach your goal. That's endurance. Endurance is never mind what, never mind what I'm going through, I will keep my head up. I will keep pressing in until I reach my goal. That's endurance. Patience is more about time. Patience is about an expectant waiting for the promises of God, like you expectantly waiting for the promises of God to be fulfilled. It's about trusting God. It's about hoping in the things of God. Not just wishing, but you kind of knowing that God is going to break through. So you just pressing in into hope and you waiting. You're not letting anything discourage you, but you patiently waiting for God. So patience is more about hope. And so when we read about Abraham, Abraham was patient and he had endurance. And that is why he was able to endure for 25 years until Isaac was born. And if you want to see great things in your life, you need to have patience and you need to have endurance. Now, these are power twins. You know, David was patient and he endured. So these are power twins. Uh, you know, David would not have sat on the throne if he did not have patience and endurance. Abraham would not have had Isaac and done great things for God if he didn't have patience and endurance. How do you build endurance? You know, you don't pray for endurance. You, you know, you can't wish for endurance. You can't strategize for endurance. You can't read a book and try to learn about endurance. You learn endurance, you build endurance in your life by simply enduring. You know, this is not what people like to hear. They like to pray for something and just receive it and go on. But endurance is very different. Endurance is simply building by enduring. You build endurance by enduring. And, you know, you can't do it any other way. I remember uh, when I ran the, the 21 kilometers in the Suva Marathon, I never thought I could run 21 kilometers. Not in my furthest dreams did I dream I could run 21 kilometers. I had run 10Ks, 5Ks, all the shorter distances, and I thought that was it. But after going to Suva Marathon for a while with my life runners, uh, teammates for a number of years, this kind of feeling of wanting to run the half marathon, 21 kilometers, started coming up as a, as a desire in my heart. And so when we started 
asking, who's going to do 10? Who's going to do half marathon? And I thought, I will try the half marathon. Even though I'd never run that kind of distance before. And you know, uh, Karen Patnode from, from Life Runners gave me a 12-week training program on, you know, uh, you know, like you do shorter distances, then you keep increasing your distances over 12 weeks until you start hitting those 21K uh, distances before the actual race in Suva. So I took that 12-week training program and I started following. You, you know, and Karen said, you can make changes to it, you know, as you go along. And so I adjusted it a little bit, but it was basically the, the, uh, the core program was the same. And so week one, week two, week three, I just kept doing it. Week one, I did 5K, 10K, week two, 12K, week three, 15K. Then it continued to increase slowly. By the eighth week, I was hitting 21K, 18K. And I remember um, those runs, some of those runs were so hard because there was rain, there was wind, there was heat. But I noticed something that over a period of weeks, I began to find this endurance, this strength coming into my muscles. Even my mind began to change and I began to really believe and think that, yes, I can do 21 kilometers. I can do it. My muscles began to become stronger, my, my veins. And, you know, even I started losing a little bit of weight just so that I could be in form. You know, I just, I didn't mean to lose weight, but I began to start finding that my weight began to be loose and loose until my, even my trousers began, my, 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 uh, my pants became a little bit loose. Why? Because my body was beginning to change and build this endurance physically. And I remember running in the actual event in Suva. To, after 12 weeks, we went to Suva and I ran that 21K race with other life runners and other people out there in Suva. And I found something interesting. I found that even though it was windy that morning as we came around the Masese waterfront, it was windy, it was raining. But I found that I really honestly enjoyed the race. Why? Because I had built endurance. For those 12 long weeks, I had built that endurance. Slowly by slowly, I had built endurance over the days and the weeks and the months. Until when I hit Suva, the 21K didn't become an impossibility in my mind. It became possible and I enjoyed the race. I, had, I did not stop once and I actually finished in a good time. And it's similar to our spiritual muscles. You know, it's similar to running the spiritual race. Where we have to build endurance spiritually. Where we have to build endurance where there's every little crisis becomes a building up of endurance until the next one. Until we're building the spiritual muscles, we can begin to face bigger and bigger trials. We find that the trials of the future is no longer a struggle or even an impossibility and too hard for us, but instead we can handle it because we have been building this endurance into our spiritual muscles or week after week after week until we are ready. And in this COVID-19, I know it's hard. I know it's difficult for many families, if not all families. But I want to tell you today that you are building spiritual muscles and during in your life, endurance, in your spiritual life, in your mindset, you're building that, that I can do attitude and you're building that into your, into the, your capacity, your very core being of your spiritual life. Why? Because you are being prepared for greater things. God is preparing you for greater things. David was, he went through persecution when Saul hunted him like a dog in the caves, in the mountains. He had to escape one time through a window when Saul's men came to kill him in, in his bedroom. David built, was building that endurance. Why? For the throne of Israel. He was building that until a day when he would become king. And I believe God is building something great in your life today for the future. So please, when you're going through a difficult time, you are not to look at what's happening now, but you are to look at the bigger picture at what God is doing for your life. That's endurance. 
But when you talk about the other side, patience, this is what the Bible says about patience. So I want us to turn with our Bibles to James, James um, chapter 1. The very first few verses, Paul, uh, James begins to explain about patience. And he says in James 1 verse 2, he says, My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Wow. Did you hear that? Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Wow, if that was me, naturally, I wouldn't count it joy to fall into COVID-19 pandemic kind of pressure. I wouldn't count it joy when I'm going through a tough time with my family and other things. But it actually says, count it all joy. It's like when you receive a lot of money, you don't receive it and get miserable. No, we rejoice and we're happy. Why? Because of the benefit that it brings us. Right? And it's like patience. You know, it's like trials. We, we are to count it joy. Why? Because it's going to bring us something of benefit. And then he tells us what it brings us. And it says in verse 3, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. What the trials will bring you is patience. It produces patience. It builds patience. In verse 4, James 1, 4, it says, But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So patience is a worker. Patience does something for us. As we go through the trial, patience is working in our lives, building us up, making us complete and entire. Right now, indirectly, these few verses is saying, you are not complete, you're not entire, I'm not complete. But it says when patience comes, it actually makes me a complete person. It builds me up to be a complete spiritual man, a spiritual person for God. And that's the same for all of us. You are incomplete now, so but when you go through trials, it builds you up in completing you. Every trial makes you more and more complete. Patience is from working during the trial with the Holy Spirit, controlling your emotions, making sure that your mind is focused on the things of God. You keep yourself under control until you, until you see the promise of God being fulfilled for your life, until you come out on the other side. That's patience. Now, when you bring these two things together, you actually have a powerhouse working for you. When everybody else is panicking, you know, uh, we hear on social media now, people are panicking, getting angry, all kinds of things. Yet you and I can remain calm. You and I can remain calm because patience and endurance is working together. In the midst of the crisis, we are patient and we are enduring because God is building the spiritual muscles and we will not quit, we will, will not be defeated. Why? Because we can handle it now. We can handle the pressure because we have built those spiritual muscles over the months of this crisis, over the weeks of going through the difficulties of life. Patience is completing us. Endurance is building these muscles into our very spiritual lives. David had to learn endurance hiding in those caves, running away from King Saul, fleeing for, fleeing for his very life. He had to hide every time he had to hide. David had to learn patience and endurance. But then at the right time, Saul died and David was exalted to become the very next king. And when David became the king of Israel, he became one of the greatest kings Israel had ever known. Why? Because he had built that capacity. He had built patience and endurance. And all those years of running from Saul had prepared him for the throne. Had prepared him for greatness. And what you are going through today is simply preparing you for greatness. It's preparing you for something greater. For some of you that you never dreamed possible. See, God can take something ordinary and make it extraordinary. But it depends on how we 
go through this crisis, how we go through times of pressure. How do you go through those things? Do you go through those things with joy, seeing it with joy because patience is coming, producing and building it into your life, make you complete? Do you see it as a place of building your spiritual muscles, enduring so that you may build endurance? Why? Because patience and endurance will bring you your promise. If you want to build something great, you have to start here and start now. Building patience and endurance starts here. So let's stop complaining. I'm not saying all of, any of us are complaining, but you know, if any of us are complaining or getting frustrated, let's just stop. And instead, let's start saying, no, I refuse to complain. I refuse to quit. God is doing something in this crisis. God is making me complete. God is building endurance because there's something greater for you, each one of you. You know, if you if you're going through this time, you need to ask yourself, will I let it break me or will I let it make me? You know, if you, if you allow patience and endurance to work in your life, it'll make you. It'll fashion you. It'll make you stronger, make you Christ-like. You'll be positioned for greatness in your life. If you humble yourself, God will exalt you in due time. God will exalt you in due time. I believe it's in Peter where it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. So when we're going through this kind of crisis, you know, the first thing that we're tempted to do is talk. We're tempted to react. We're tempted to post something on social media, anger, frustration. But you know what it says is humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You know, and so people don't see you humbling yourself, but that's an attitude of your heart. You simply humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, waiting for the due time. There's a timing in the things of God. And this COVID is not going to be forever. This COVID will not be, this crisis will not go on forever. We'll come out of it one way or another. And when we come out of it, I believe God will make us stronger. I believe we'll be stronger for it. There was a time when, when Saul was pursuing David. And David was in the cave. So Saul took his armies into the caves looking for David. Then Saul got tired and he rested. He lay down and rested with his men. David came with another one of his men and came into Saul's very cave. They, uh, Saul was, was lying there. Now, David could have, been, could have allowed all this frustration and anger. This king who has been pressuring me, pursuing me, wanting to kill me, this is my opportunity. I can end it right now. And he could have killed Saul. Maybe that would have been the end of all the persecution for David. In fact, that was what, what his men said. They said, kill him. In a paraphrase, they were saying, take his life, kill him. That will end him and end everything bad against you. In our natural mind, we'll just say, yes, let's do it. You know, God has delivered him into our hand. Let's just take his life and that's it. But what did David do? What is his response? David is amazing. He knew that Saul was not to be removed by his hand, but by the hand of God. So what did, what did David tell his men? He says, no, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. So what, did, uh, what does David do? He gets his knife, his sword, and he cuts a piece of Saul's clothes. He takes it with him and he disappears into the night, leaving his wicked enemy alive in the cave. What about you and I? Will we let our angers and frustrations make us do things that we see is the easiest way out? Does our anger and frustrations make us do things that we think will remove this threat 
will make things easier for me and my family? Or do we still put ourselves under the mighty hand of God, knowing that it's God's hand that is going to deliver us? David did not allow all this anger and frustration of himself or his men to control the way he perceived the situation. David allowed his spiritual muscles, endurance, to continue. He allowed patience while he was waiting for God's hand rather than his own hand. So in the midst of this crisis, I want to encourage all of us. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But in the midst of this crisis, we need to always make the right choices. Don't let your emotions and frustrations guide you in your decisions, but instead be guided by God himself. Put yourself under his mighty hand. Refuse to let the pressure guide you. Instead, let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let the word of God guide you. Patience is doing something to complete you in this crisis. Endurance is working to build strong spiritual muscles. I know it's hard for you, but that's the only way you will learn to endure, is by enduring. But when you learn patience and endurance, you'll obtain the promise, like Abraham obtained the promise. God is preparing you for greater things. The only way you can run a marathon is to run many more, many marathons. So by the time you hit the main event, you'll be strong. You might even enjoy the race. And so my encouragement to you, my friend, don't give up. Be patient and endure. It's a long wait. Many crises might take a long time. But through every crisis, through every struggle, it builds us up rather than tears us down. We become better for tomorrow. We become destined for greater things. We become people who are not broken, but instead we become people who are molded and fashioned by God himself. God has great plans for you and I, but it's waiting on the other side. What we do now will determine how we do on the other side. And so I encourage all of you who are listening today, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's surrender to God. Let's, instead of giving way to, our pay, to, to frustrations and anger and our emotions, let's give way to what God wants in the midst of the crisis. Be patient and endurance. The power twins of faith. In the midst of this crisis, even though it's a long wait, you and I can come out better on the other side. So let's pray. Father, I pray for every single person listening to me today. I pray, God, that you will bless them, that you will cover each one with your divine protection. But I pray today, Lord, in line with the message, that our attitudes will begin to change, that we will make that simple decision that instead of grumbling in the midst of the crisis, we will take joy and we will wait for patience to be produced in our hearts We'll take joy, God, knowing that we are being made complete. We will learn to endure by simply enduring. That we won't look around us and give up, but instead we'll say, God is making me stronger for the future. Help us, O oh God. We know that we are never alone, but your Spirit is with us. And I pray for every single person bowing their heads. Let your Holy Spirit guide them and lead them and strengthen them by your grace. Oh God, I pray that no one will quit, no one will give up, but they will learn patience and endurance. Father, we thank you. We commit this time into your hands. We love you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to encourage all of us today. Please worship with us as we go through this song today. Then after that, we have the Sunday school department. And, uh, and I believe you'll be richly blessed. God bless you and I will see you to say goodbye at the end after the Sunday school um, finishes their program. God bless you and see you again.
school program. For the next three weeks, we will be talking about prayer. Before we begin, let us bow head. Let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, thank you for the life of the children. Thank you for the life of their family, Father. Father, thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins to be forgiven, Father. Father, pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will hover over us and guide us and lead us, Father. Father, thank you for the life of your volunteers, Father. 
Father, we give you back the glory, we give you back the honor. And unto none other name I pray, but your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Hey kids, do you have a best friend? Don't you want to tell them about the cool things you just saw? Don't you want to tell them about don't you want to tell them that you just that you just heard a wonderful kids praise song and kids worship song? Don't you want to tell them that you just learned how to play ukulele and your fingers still hurts? Well, kids, you and your friends have a relationship with someone. You tell them things and you want to listen to what they tell you. It's the same with God. You can have a relationship with God too. You matter to God and He wants to hear about all things and have lots of things to tell you. Now, let's check out our memory verse of the week. Before we do that, it's time for our song. Welcome to our memory verse corner. Our memory verse for today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 13. I have it here on the board and I will be reading from the board. Jeremiah 29:13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I'll say it again. Jeremiah 29:13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Now kids, we, have, we will be talking about prayer. That's our main topic for the next three weeks. And hope that you will uh, listen very carefully as we talk to you about prayer. Okay, that was our memory verse. I'm happy to show you the actions for our memory verse so that it helps you remember. Okay? So let's begin. Jeremiah 29.13. You open your hand like you're reading the Bible. Jeremiah 29.13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. One more time. Jeremiah 29.13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. For the last time. Let's do it again. You ready? Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me. You know what's next? And find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Good job. Well done, kids. Now, kids, our memory verse sounds like God's promise to those who search for him in spirit and in truth. He will come to you if you look for him through prayer and reading his word the bible he promised that if we look for him we will find him it says in the mind in the memory verse that we have just said together he knows what's best for you but he would always want you to talk to him in prayer he loved to hear you talk to him so shall we say our memory verse one more time with action 
Jeremiah 29 13 you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart now this memory verse the kids you can always use it when you pray you can always say God you promise that I will find you if I look for you with all my heart you will see God will bless your life for now and also when you are growing up. So kids, don't forget to practice saying your memory verse for this week. Until next time, take care. God bless. Modemanda. Hello kids. Welcome back. Our Bible reading is from the Bible taken from the book of James chapter 5 from verse 13 to verse 16. Before we begin, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this beautiful morning. Thank you, Lord, for the breath of life which you've given us this morning. Lord, we thank you for your love and for your protection upon our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit of God. We invite you to come and lead us and guide us this beautiful day. Lord, we commit, O oh God, the rest of the time unto your hands. Lord, as we will read your word this morning, we pray, Lord, that you'll give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that comes alone from you. Help us, O oh God, to understand your word. We love you. We bless your name we give you praise we give you glory in jesus name we pray amen well kids the bible says if any one of you is having trouble he should pray if any one of you is happy he should sing praises if any one of you is sick he should call the elders the elders should pour oil on him in the name of the lord and pray for him and the prayer that is said with faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will heal him, and if he has sinned, God will forgive him. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Do this so that God can heal you. When a good man prays, great things happen. That's the end of our Bible reading. Why do we pray? It is simply to talk to God and to get his direction for our lives. God is good and will help us when we are happy, when we are sick, or even when we are in trouble. God will give us wisdom, strength, and understanding if only we ask Him. In fact, God is willing to give us many good things as long as we ask for them in accordance to His will. When we pray, our relationship with God grows. For, for your home of children, please read again, James chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, and answer the following questions. Question 1. What is prayer? Question 2. What are some examples of why we pray mentioned in James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16? Question 3. What else can we pray for? We will discuss the answers next time we meet. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the little children who have uh, listened, O oh God, to your word today. We pray, Lord, that you help them to understand your word. We pray, Lord, that you help these little children to be a doer of your word. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. That's all we have for you from our Bible Story Corner. Until next time, God bless you and goodbye. Did you learn something today, kids? We pray you do. Don't forget 
to do your homework and don't forget to practice what we learned today. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for the life of these children. Thank you for the lesson that we have learned today. Father, help us to be the doers of your word and not hearers only. Thank you for the life of the volunteers, Father. Father, we give back the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, kids, it's time to say goodbye. See you all again don't forget to ask your parents if you want to encourage other kids on what you have learned this week by sending us your videos take care kids god bless goodbye thank you everyone for joining uh, with us today for the sunday school program and also uh, those adults and youth who was who are still here after the preaching god bless you uh, thank you children for joining with us and uh, i hope you enjoyed the program uh, we pray that uh, you'll be able to join us every week right here uh, on this on this uh, online church service. Uh, thank you again to all the Sunday school uh, teachers, Sunday school department. Uh, you did a great job as well today. Uh, thank you again for, for all the hard work that you have done. And so God bless you, everyone. Uh, let's, let's just bow heads and let's give praise and thanks to the Almighty God. And Father, we thank you today. I pray a blessing again upon all the children who have joined us for the Sunday School. Bless all those who, who have participated, the Sunday School Department. Also bless every family, Lord, who has joined uh, us today as well. Father, we thank you. We commit everything into your hands. We love you. We bless you. And we pray most of all for our nation, O oh God, that you'll deliver our nation from this COVID-19. I pray for your protection upon all the people of this land. O oh God, that you'll protect them from this COVID. Give each one wisdom, O oh God in what actions to take so that they may protect themselves at all times. Father, we thank you. We commit every person again into your hands. We love you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you. God bless you. See you again next week.